Good afternoon. We are glad you are here with us today. I am David Monahan and welcome to the Salsa Show. Today we are in Coish Valley Community Centre and we are doing a mixture of things. Join me in the studio is Paul O'Keefe. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. So how are you today? Oh, I'm grand. Okay, so I just have a mixture of questions that you need to answer. Okay. Why did you decide to become a teacher? Wow, that is a deep question. I thought you said there wasn't going to be anything deep. Um, I guess it was because so that I could keep playing. Because when you're a teacher, what you spend most of your time doing is playing. And I just wanted to not stop playing. Oh. Um, okay. What did you do before you became a teacher? Um, well, I did a lot of different jobs. I worked in factories. I worked in, um, I worked in drug agencies. I worked in a refugee centre, and then I finally came back to teaching. Oh, okay. And where do you originally come from? I come from Ard Carmen, which is opposite Little in Wexford Town. Oh. Okay, what inspired you to make Hewlett a place for kids? Um, myself and Deirdre were running a youth club out of uh, St. Mary's Daycare Centre and we never had enough room and we never had uh, enough space to do what we wanted to do. And one day we were sitting in Deirdre's kitchen and uh, wondering what we were going to do and we looked out of the window and we saw the windmill. And uh, we said to ourselves, why don't we take over the farm because it's empty and nobody is using it and uh, it's just attracting antisocial behaviour. So we, that was in 2009, so we started um, making moves within the local community to see how we could take it over and how we could start fixing it up. Oh, so that, then it just became a place for kids. <laughs> That's it, a place where we could keep playing. Yeah. Um, what are the plans for the future for Yola? Uh, this summer, hopefully, we're going to put a new roof on the main hall. Because, as you know, we've taken the skate park back into use and yeah. we have the chill out area and we have the playground and all the grounds and the football field and so on. Yeah. But the big hole is a bit empty and it's not being used and it's a beautiful big hole. So when we put a roof on it, um, I would hope that we would be able to start doing things like this, having like radio shows or learning how to use technology and maybe try to get the school to use the hole a bit more because it will be a much better and safer yeah. place. Oh yeah, okay. So, thank you for being with us today. It was a pleasure having you. You're welcome. Thank you, David. Okay. Now we are going to Oshin, Jacob and Alex for an enjoyable game and review. Today we're going to be talking about The Crew 2. It's a sequel to The Crew, but more vehicles like Monza Trucks and everything. What are your thoughts on the game? Well, it seems pretty cool since you're having, you're having more vehicles this time. I'd say if they're going to make another sequel, they're going to add trains. <laughs> and it just, yeah. It's going to be About really hectic. Fun. Next game is The Evil We're In 2. It's another sequel to a great hit made in 2014, The Evil We're In. But this game, you're apparently looking for your daughter in this abandoned park, it seems. We don't know much about it, but it seems to be sticking with the old roots of it being so dark and foggy and you don't really know that much about By it. Way, uh, what do you think? think about it. I think it'd be um, very scary oh yeah, it's like, like super anything, scary. anything um, like it just a haunted the, spirit could come out. In the ending yeah. they actually put Spider Man in the ending of the last game there. Uh, the next game is Kirby. It's uh, Kirby is on another adventure. You know jumping, eating monsters, sending them to another dimension so he can use your powers and, <laughs> <laughs> and devouring even more monsters. You know Fun. Also, it's while keeping Q, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And it's the four player co co op as well. I think it's probably going to come out on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, since, since Kirby is a Nintendo game. Yeah. Although there is. Nintendo have confirmed there is no trailer for or no information to ne Nintendo. They have confirmed they are making a new video game. What do you think it will be about? Well, it says here it's good. they're making a new Pokemon game as yeah. well as they're, ma they're making Kirby. So they have a lot of work to do, but as long as, for the Pokemon fans, as long as they know that there's going to be, the Pokemon series is still going to be up and running, making more games. But um, it, they're making another game. It's a new Yoshi game that will Ooh. be, but this time we have some information when, when it's going to oh. be coming out and what console is going to be coming out. 
Um, it's gonna be coming out on a Nintendo Switch, not an else, just a Nintendo Switch as oh. well as it's gonna. But it's gonna be coming out uh, to, in 2018, maybe in the middle or maybe near the end of it. What do you think your thoughts on on the Nintendo Switch, though? Mm. The Nintendo Switch is pretty awesome. It's, it's pretty like, cool, but it can be difficult to use. Yeah, Different. well, the Wii games always tend to do that. Yeah, but um, I think the Nintendo Switch, it's going to be good since you get to play, like, um, Yoshi, like a high-detailed version of Yoshi wherever you go, like, in the car or if you're camping. Hopefully, it's going to be, like... Hopefully it's gonna be like Yoshi's Island or Yoshi's Story. So, All right, so now the last game is we should take it away then. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy, was released on June 30th, 2017. It's a platforming video game developed by The Carries Visions. And it was published on the PS4. Remastered, ooh, awesome. Well, I, I played Crash Bandicoot yeah. w- once or twice, and I, it was a really good game. Yeah. See, like, it's been quite a while, but eventually they finally remastered yeah, it. Yeah, I love the way you get yeah. new monsters. And th- I won't lie to you. I know she's just not right for you. And you can tell me if I'm off, I see it on your face when you say that she's the one that you want. And you're spending all this time in this wrong situation And any time you want it to stop So I know I can treat you better than she can And any boy like you deserves a perfect girl Tell me why you're wasting time and now you're wasting crying And you should be with me instead So I know I can treat you better, better than she can I'll stop time for you The second you say you liked me too I just want to give you the loving that you're missing Maybe just to wake up with you Would be everything I need and this could be so different Tell me what you want to do So I know I can treat you better than she can And any boy like you deserves a perfect girl Tell me why are you wasting time and now you're wasting crying and you should be with me instead Cause I know I can treat you better, better than she can That was Lily May performing Treat You Better And now I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Sophie But before that we are going to listen to our reporter Ruby and Orla That were out and about this week asking what do you think about the weather this summer so far uh, I think it's been great. Um, I've got a nice tan. I'm as brown as anything. Browner than I've ever been. I like the weather like it's warm, like so cold. Uh, it's it's alright. It's been bad because the weather hasn't been that good. Yes, yesterday it was raining. Yeah, it's not so bad. I really like the weather in the summer because it's really hot and you get to go to the beach whenever you want to go swimming and it's really hot. I really like it. It's been really good. I love the summer. It's been It's really nice. Temperatures have been quite comfortable and please God it'll stay the way it is. Well, it's been pretty good. Kind of sunny here and there. Probably one of the best summers I've ever seen. Absolutely outstanding! It's been alright. Um, it's been nice, I guess, since I came back from Spain. I really like the warm weather we're having so far. And I hope we get a thunderstorm with lots of lightning. That was interesting. Hello, my name is Sophie and I'm going to be with you for the rest of the sh- show. Here in studio is Sylvia, who's a 12-year-old girl from Madrid in Spain. Hello, Sophie. And Sylvia is in Ireland for three weeks to improve her English. Sylvia is going to be talking about basketball basketball because basketball is her favourite sport. Also joining me in studio is Susie, who is a 13-year-old girl from Wexford. And she is going to be talking about horse riding because horse riding is her favourite sport. So, Sylvia, when did you start playing basketball? Well, I stopped playing basketball when I was 10. And why did you start to play basketball? I start because I wanted to learn how to play it because it looks fun. It looks fun to me. Where do you play basketball? I play it in San Agustin School in Madrid. Do you have to wear any gear? And if you do, what does it look like? Yes, I have to wear a t-shirt with my number 18 and shorts. They are blue and white. How many t- times a week do you train for basketball? I play basketball three times a week. Do you find basketball difficult? It's difficult to learn, but it's not difficult to play once you learn it. 
And my last question is, do you enjoy playing basketball? Yes, I enjoy it a lot because all, my, all of my friends play it with me. Thank you, Sylvia. Thanks. And now we are going to be changing the sport to horse riding, where Susie's going to be talking about it. Hello, Susie. Hi. OK. Uh, when did you start horse riding? Um, I, it's been on and off for a few years, but probably started back in 2016. And where do you, where do, you do horse riding? At Hazelwood Stables in Kildan. Um, why did you start? I started because I love horses. What do you wear when you ride a horse? I have to wear a helmet, sometimes gloves and a back protector. And how many times a week do you go horse riding? I do a lesson on Saturday, but sometimes go down to help. Is it difficult to ride a horse? Sometimes, depending on what we do. And do you enjoy it? I love it so much. Lastly, what is your favourite horse or pony like? My favourite pony is a dark brown pony called Champ. Thank you, Susie. Introducing the banana hat. What can the banana hat do? If you're craving a banana, just pick a banana from the hat. What else can it do? If you eat a banana, you might explode. Dun dun dun. You can get the banana hat at a low price of 1 million euro. Mmm. Earlier this week, Jace, Jacob asked yours truly a few questions about Komogi. Hello, Sophie, and welcome. I'm going to ask you some questions about um, Komogi. So let's start. When did you start Komogi? I started Komogi when I was six years old. Mm, young age to start. <laughs> um, what team do you play for? Um, I play for St Mary's Rosslare. What position do you normally play uh, in Komogi? Um, I sometimes play midfield and I sometimes play forward. What are your team colours? Uh, our team colours are blue and yellow. What days do you train? I train every Wednesday from half six to half seven. What made you join Komogi? Um, I joined it because my friends are doing it and it looks really fun. How much do you enjoy Komogi and why? Um, I love Komogi because I'm just with my friends and I have a lot of fun doing it. Final question. What would you say to, for an upcoming Komogi player that wants to join Komogi, obviously? Um, just to keep training and to never give up. All right, thank you for coming here today, and that's all. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, do you know how I'm breaking while you fall asleep? Well, do you know I'm still haunted by the memories? Well, do you know I'm trying to pick myself up piece by piece? Little do you know I need a little more time. Underneath it all, I'm held captive by the hole inside. I've been holding back for the fear that you might change your mind. I'm ready to forgive you, but forgetting is a harder fight. Little do you know I, I need a little more time. Away, away, I love you like you've never felt the pain. Away, I promise you don't have to be afraid. Away, the love is here and here to say so lay your head on me. Little do you know I know you're hurting while I'm so asleep. Little do you know all my mistakes are slowly driving me. Little do you know I'm trying to make it better piece by piece. Little do you know I, I love you till the sun dies, eyes away. That was David singing a piece of Little Do You Know. Earlier this week, Amy interviewed Lily May about Irish dancing as she is an All-Ireland champion. Hello, Lily May. Hello. Um, when did you start Irish dancing? I started Irish dancing when I was eight years old. Where do you do Irish dancing? I do it in Kilran on Wednesdays and in Cleary's Town on Mondays. How did you get into Irish dancing? Well, when I was younger, all of my friends did an Irish dancing class, so I joined in and I really liked it, so I continued. What do you find so interesting about Irish dancing? I think it's lots of fun and you make new friends. What is your favourite dance? I like all the reels, like the A reel, the B reel and the intermediate reel. Where is the furthest place you have travelled to a competition? In England for the Celtic Nationals. When did you claim the title of an All-Ireland? All In 2015. 
How many trophies and medals do you have? I have over 30 trophies and over 120 medals. Your hand fits in mine like it's made just me. But bear it in mind it was meant to be. I'm joining up to that with the freckles on your cheeks. And it all made sense to me. I know you've never loved. The crinkles by your eyes when you smile, you've never loved your stomach or your thighs. The dimples in your back at the bottom of your spine, but I love them endlessly. I won't let these little things slip out of my mouth. But if I do, it's you, oh it's you, they add up to. I'm in love with you and all these little things. You can't go to bed without a cup of tea. Maybe that's the reason that you talk in your sleep. And all those conversations are the secrets that I keep, though it makes no sense to me. That was Susie singing Little Things. Yesterday, Oshin caught up with Fran from Wexford, Wexford Local Development and asked him a few questions about what he does. Hi, Fran. My name is Oshin. Hi, Oshin. Uh, thank you for coming to talk to us today. Not at all. You're welcome. All right, so I have a few questions for you here. No problem. Could you walk us through the work of Wexford Local Development? Um, well, it does what it says on the tin. We're based in Wexford, we're very local, yeah. and we're all about developing communities and developing people. Hmm. That sounds very interesting. Uh, it is very interesting work. Um, we work all over County Wexford, not just in Rosslear where we are today. Um, we work with lots of different groups of people, um, mostly voluntary groups like the people who run this community centre that we're in in Rosslear. Oh. And we work with a lot of individuals around education and training and finding work for people. Yeah, that sounds actually really good. Mm. We deal with everybody from people your age right up to people who are much, much older, maybe as old as me. When did you start into this development? Well, uh, gosh, I am working in local development for nearly 20 years, maybe even 25 years. Wow. Um, quite a long time. Um, and I've been based in Wexford, so I have a lot of experience in working in this sort of work. Must have gotten a lot of employees of the month then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure about that, but um, the fact that I'm still working all those years later, I suppose, says something. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been fired yet. <laughs> Okay, uh, why did you start into Wexford lo Local Development? Oh gosh, that's a long time ago. Um, well, I was working at something else and I decided to kind of go back to school. And I went to college and I did a diploma in mm. local development. Um, and then really I started in the work, but I enjoy working with people. Um, so that, and this kind of work, it's all about working with people. Um, so I, I thoroughly enjoy my job. Yeah. It's all about teamwork. It's all about teamwork. Yeah. You got it in one. But do you think this is good for the children and why? Well, I think it's good because sometimes if you listen to radio, you think it's so way out there or it's happening in Dublin or something like this. This shows you really that you can do it yourself. Yeah. You can be a radio presenter. And now I think maybe at the end of this week, you understand how radio works. And also, I think that rather than just being listening to radio and watching social media, now you know how you can create radio. And now you know how you can tell your own story on radio. Yeah. It's something that you can do just as much as anybody else. And to think we're only doing this for one week while up there in Dublin they can do this all year. Well, yeah, but maybe this you might think or some of the other guys here might think that, gosh, I could make a career out of this. Maybe, maybe I could go into radio. Maybe I could become a sound engineer and one day you might be sitting at a desk in RTE in Donnybrook interviewing the Taoiseach or something like that. Yeah. I've always been told I do have a good microphone present. Oh, very good. Yeah, you've got a, as somebody said to me once, Fran, you've got a great face for the radio. <laughs> <laughs> How do you plan to expand on this? Oh, that's a good question as well. Well, first of all, I want to see and I want to hear from all you guys how the week went. Did you enjoy it? What was good? What was bad? 
Um, and then myself and others will go and have a sit down and have a talk about it and maybe plan for doing something else in the future. So we're giving it a bit of a try this week, see how everybody got on. Then we'd sit down and have a look and see if we can do something similar or build on it maybe. We don't know yet, but I'd definitely be back to you. What do you think of a, like a little mini game jam thing? If you don't know what that is, I'll explain it to okay, you. Okay, perhaps you better. See, um, I, I, do you know a music jam where people get together and make a, uh, make a song? Yes. This is like that, but with gaming. They get together and make a game. Oh. And what I was thinking, why it'd be good for the children, is because it'd build teamwork. And... Like, say, it wouldn't be too complicated, like Game Maker or something, because that involves uh, intermediate coding experience. So oh, right. I would try, like, the Scratch or something simpler. Okay, and what kind of things do you need for that? You need laptops and computers? You or need laptops, really. Well, I know there are some plans that maybe by this time next year, this very room that we're sitting in, <coughs> Maybe equipped with a lot of computers and gaming equipment. Yeah. Um, and that whole idea about having, what did you call it again, a game? Game jam. A gaming jam. This time next year, it might be possible that you could do a gaming jam in this very room where we're sitting. Because yeah. we do have plans, and David, who runs the centre here, has plans to convert this room into a gaming or a computer room. Oh. So perhaps with a bit of luck, fingers crossed, next year we will be fingers crossed. Next year we will be doing a, a gaming jam yeah. right here. It was very nice to talk to you, and I hope to speak to you again. Okay, thanks, Oshi. You're very, very welcome. It was nice to be here. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. Does your cat sleep too much? Yes, too much. We've got a solution for that. Just give your cat a crazy cat treat. How much is it? You can get your very own packet for only four euro. Or you can get two packets for 20 euro. That's a great deal. That was interesting. Joining me now is David Clancy. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you very much. So, David, tell us about your role in the community centre. Well, my role is the chairman of, of the community centre and I suppose the chairman's job is to encourage people to get involved um, chair meetings and uh, just the general run of the whole building. That's about it, really. And how long have you worked in the Cushbury Community Centre? Well, I retired from the health service four years ago and I got involved with Cushbury shortly after that. So about four years now. And do you enjoy working here? I love it. I, I got a great kick out of it and I love to see the kids getting involved in the, in the community centre here. Where, do you get, where did you get the idea of painting the ESP box? <laughs> <laughs> well, before they were done, uh, they were very industrial looking. They, were, they didn't seem to be fit into a residential area. Um, so we decided to either paint them or what to call wrapping. So we decided to go on the wrapping process. If you see a bus that where they have advertisement on it, yeah. that's called that, that's called wrapping. Um, and that was an easy decision. The hard decision was to come up with a design that was going to be suitable. And we were looking at all sorts of designs, and nothing seemed to fit in. And I was looking at a program one night called Tanked. I don't know if you ever watched that on Discovery, mm. where they do fish tanks, all massive fish tanks. And that's where the idea came from, to do a fish tank to cover the, the ESP box. So, And people seem to like it, so it's... it's yeah, a, it's really nice. Yeah. Um, why did you start working in the Cushbury Community Centre? Well, uh, basically I've seen a need for uh, this end of the village to, to have something for the kids here, you know. So, I mean, they were really lost. There was nothing up here for them. So this is one of the reasons why I got involved. I've been involved in voluntary work with young people all my adult life anyway. Hmm. Can you tell us more about the LEADER project? Oh, well, the LEADER project is a big venture for this community centre, considering that we've only reopened it two and a half years. And we're looking at putting in educational uh, programmes in this conference room 
but we need to put the high tech uh, equipment into it. So it's going to cost a lot of money, and that's phase one. Uh, phase two of, of the project is to set up a youth cafe that's going to target the older um, juveniles that live in the area. That's very interesting. And my last question is, what are your plans for the two states in the future? Just to make them beautiful and have a, a nice place for people to live. Okay. Thank you for talking with me today. And thank have you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye now. That's all we have time for today. Please join us next time on the De Salsa radio show. But before we go, we would like to do something special for Jacob and Amy, as it is Jacob's birthday today and it is Amy's birthday during the week. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.